So you're driving along and your car just suddenly stalls or there's a loss in power. What causes that? What are the things that are usually behind this sudden loss of power or causing the car to stall? We're just going to talk you through some of the obvious areas, the things you should be looking at and checking, how to go about diagnosis as well of this problem so you can have complete confidence in your car. And often if you had a little bit of a power blip, it's a symptom that there is a more serious underlying problem that needs to be addressed. In my experience, problems do tend to escalate and get worse over time. Being able to identify these problems early on can often mean we get to them before we suffer from the inconvenience of a breakdown. So I really want this video to be a very quick fire process of just going through the problem. So if you've had any problem with your car, the first thing you should do is download the error codes from the OBD2 port. If you haven't got an OBD2 port reader, it will be an idea to have a chat with a friendly mechanic who does and just get him to pull off the diagnostic codes. Now, it's a good idea at this point, once you've got the codes and you've been able to identify problems listed, reset them and then see if they crop up again. You'll find cars have lots of random errors and problems that crop up from time to time. So you really want to pull those out of the equation. And the only way of doing that really is to do that reset and just see if that problem pops back again. So any car needs fuel in order to progress. Even if it's an EV, you still need electrical power, but we're not really talking about those in this video. So if there's a fuel problem, that will lead to the engine spluttering, cutting out or completely stalling. So the most common thing is usually just insufficient fuel in the tank. So check the obvious, make sure there is fuel in the tank. Don't trust the fuel gauge on your dashboard. That can lie sometimes. So just make sure there is fuel in the tank. Check the fuel filter as well. Often these fuel filters get blocked up over time and that can affect the flow of fuel to the engine. And a lot of modern engines use an awful lot of fuel. So if you've got direct injection or a high performance car, it's going to be pulling in a lot more fuel. And you'll often experience these fuel issues at the top end of the RPM range. So if it tends to happen when you're at that upper end of the RPM range and it's a fuel problem, it could well be the fuel pump. There's also a possibility that the injector there has degraded in some way. Primarily on your gasoline or your petrol powered cars, they require a spark in order to initiate the burn in the engine. So if there's any kind of fault in this within the ignition coil, the spark plug itself, or just a connection to the battery, a bad earth, that can cause the car to misfire and that power to suddenly disappear. So this might evidence itself as a misfire every now and then, it can cause the car to completely cut out and stall. So that moves us on to electrical issues. So these will also affect diesel powered cars as well. So the electrical system in a car is vital really. So if the battery in the car is not able to supply sufficient power, the car is going to struggle. And the common thing that happens is the alternator that's supposed to be putting charge back into the battery can't keep up with the draw that's coming from the battery. So you have situations where your battery is dangerously low and at certain points in driving, that power is not going to be sufficient to drive all of the components within the engine that, that require that electrical power. So that is going to cause a problem with the way the engine is able to function. So check the battery voltage. I've done another video in the short dealing with that. Also check the alternator charge levels and just make sure there is enough voltage getting in. So that can often manifest itself more on short journeys and short runs. If you do long journeys, you may find you're just topping the battery up enough to avoid those problems. So battery problems often manifest themselves gradually. So you might notice it takes a long time to start. You might notice that the lights dim a lot more than they normally do when you start the car, or it may just feel like everything in the car is running at half power from time to time. The dashboard lights may be momentarily flicker or blink off. And there's just those little warning signs that maybe all is not well with your battery in your car. So overheating in the engine is another cause for it to cut out. So an engine will try and protect itself. In most cases with modern ECUs, it will detect significant problems inside the engine. And if the engine temperature raises too high, it will generally shut things off before you have a major problem. But there are instances where the engine can seize. If the components in the engine just get too hot, that can cause the engine to seize completely. 
and you've got very, very expensive repair bills to deal with there. So as well as fuel, the car needs a supply of air going into the engine. So anything that can interrupt that flow of air going into the engine will cause a loss of power. So the air filter itself, if that's become dirty and clogged, the car is not going to struggle to get enough air going into it. So again, this is something that you're going to notice more at the higher RPM ranges because the car is needing more air to come in. If your car has a turbocharger as well, it's worth just checking that that turbocharger is working within the correct parameters. Often an ECU will panic and throw an error code and force the car to go into limp home mode if the turbocharger is supplying too much power or too little power. If it's outside those expected parameters that it's designed to work within, it will throw a hissy fit and you're going to have problems with rough running, stalling, and the engine just dying on you at times. Sensor malfunctions within the engine would be another cause for the engine to stall or cut out. So you will typically have warning lights on the dashboard. A check engine light will often come up on the dashboard. That's a big red flag. You should go and get the diagnostic codes downloaded and just see which systems are throwing that particular error code in order to start diagnosing it. It can be quite complex to get to the bottom of some of these sensor issues. Modern engines have so many different sensors all managing different aspects of the engine. And if there's an intermittent fault with one of them, or if they're not communicating properly or giving false information to the ECU, it's going to start getting very confused and throwing these sorts of problems. And then once the fuel inside the engine is burnt, it's got to push that out through the exhaust. So blockages within the exhaust system. So if you have a, a catalyst, a diesel particulate filter, or one of these lucky new people that have got the gasoline, petrol, or auto particulate filters, if they've become clogged, that's going to restrict the flow of gases from the engine, and that will lead to a loss of power. Initially, it's going to cause a drop in power, you're going to notice that over a period of time. If it's got to the point where it's become so blocked that the engine is stalling, you've been a really unobservant driver and you really deserve to have the car break down on you. So I've done more detailed videos on many of the different systems and components within an engine. So if your error code or your diagnosis points to one of those areas, it'd be a good idea to just check the video out where I can go into a little more detail and just help you to understand what that system is, how it works and how to go about diagnosing the problem or replacing that defective part. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button. That really does help us to get out there. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned to the channel. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in this next video.